Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the garage. Uh, as I'm sure you can hear behind me, it's a pretty nasty rainy day outside, so we're kind of confined inside for our projects. Um, you've probably seen in some of my other videos that I made a firewood jig for cutting uh, uniform pieces of firewood that will fit inside my wood stove. Um, I just kind of threw this together with whatever I had laying around the garage. Uh, I didn't really take any time to make sure my measurements were accurate. I just kind of ballparked it. Um, I thought of some ways that I can really improve this. I'd like to share that with you and show you how you can easily build this yourself. Um, you can build it with scrap wood. You can also go to the store and get some new lumber if you'd like. Um, for my particular build that I'm going to do here today, I will give you the measurements and they will also be in the uh, description below. Um, I'm also going to show you where I get these measurements from and why they're going to be very important for your uh, wood jig and your particular application. This is not one size fits all. You can use this size if you'd like, but you need to check your own measurements before you build this. Um, this, this particular size may not work for you if you use a wood stove. Wood stoves are generally a confined space and they can only accept logs of a certain dimension. Uh, for this build that we're going to do here today, you are going to need four uh, pieces of 30 inch long 2x4s. You are going to need two pieces of 17 and a half inch 2x4s. And you will also need two 12 inch 4x4 sections and a piece of plywood for the backing here. Okay, for the back though, you could also use planks or even take apart a pallet. Uh, whatever you have laying around will really work. Um, you just have to screw it or nail it all together. Okay, um, let's get started. So one of the places that these measurements come from that are going to be important uh, or something that you at least need to pay attention to is going to be the usable length of your bar on your chainsaw if you're using a chainsaw to do this. If you make your jig too wide, you're gonna to have to make multiple cuts with the chainsaw and that's just really inconvenient and quite annoying. This is an Echo chainsaw, it has a 20 inch bar. However, just because the bar is 20 inches long does not mean that is the usable length. Uh, it is definitely worth measuring yourself. Uh, in this case, we have teeth on here to help uh, stabilize it against whatever you're cutting. You need to measure from the teeth to the end of the bar. Uh, here we have roughly, 18 and you know three quarter inch. I'd like to you know give yourself at least a little bit of wiggle room, um, so that way you're not just missing you know frayed ends on the the wood that you're cutting. Um, this is where uh, we're going to use about a 17 and a half inch width for the uh, wood jig. Also, coincidentally, my wood stove, uh, the maximum width for logs that it will accept through the opening is about 17 and a half inches wide. Um, that's convenient and also a happy coincidence. All right, we've got our lumber here. Um, some of this is left over from projects. These are cut-ins from something else that I was building. Uh, I was just putting together the woodshed from uh, another video that I'm making. Uh, we'll be bringing that to you hopefully in a week or two once I'm done finally assembling all that. Uh, but let's go ahead and take our measurements.
now that we have our cuts of wood, it's time to start putting it together. Um, I'm gonna quick lay everything out and then you can see uh, what we need to do. You're also probably gonna wanna get some screws that are at least three inches in length. You could uh, use nails also if you wanted to, that's perfectly acceptable. All right, so this is going to be the layout of the wood cutting jig. Um, these vertical pieces are 30 inches tall. I know that may seem like a lot. Um, I have a plan for this. I want to raise the bed of the jig up about 10 inches or so. Um, that way there'll be 20 inches above um, and about six to eight inches below, depending on where you space these. This is up to you. You can do it depending on your preference. Um, but you want to keep this off the ground a little bit so that way when you cut through the wood the chainsaw doesn't dip into the ground because that will ruin your chain and dull it uh, really fast. Um, I was running into that issue with my old jig um, and this is one of the improvements for the new one. We're going to get to work here starting to scroll this together uh, so bear with me and we'll be right back. Here it is, the finished wood jig. Um, I did make a, an error um, with one of the legs and I'll, I'll explain to you what I did. Um, so for this leading edge here, um, and I'll, I'll show you some close-up pictures here at the end, um, but the open end where the logs will overhang, uh, and this is where you will be cutting, um, you do not want the legs to be up against the front of the jig. You don't want to accidentally cut into them, um, and there will be a little bit of excess space because of the chainsaw um, that will prevent you basically from getting up against the, the measured width, okay? Um, so you leave these uh, horizontal pieces, these are your length measurements, these are the 17 and a half inch pieces, you leave them forward uh, maybe about like half an inch or so, which is what I've done here. Um, that way you can cut flush up against them. So this came out really well. Um, you know, as you can see this back piece here, this was just a scrap piece of plywood that I had laying around. Um, I took this off of the old jig. I'm just gonna reuse it. Um, but there's no reason why you can't do this with other pieces of wood or scrap that you may have laying around. If you have like a, you know, a two by six or, you know, two by eight, something like that. Um, you can just, just as well screw that on the back of this and there you go. Um, I did put in uh, two screws on the side here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but the screws are important on the side. You will need a bungee cord uh, or some sort of strap to hold the logs down in this. They will, uh, they will tend to bounce out um, when you're chainsawing. They'll start vibrating and, and you don't wanna contend with that. It's a mess. 
um, things will hit you in the face and it's not worth it. Um, so definitely put the bungee uh, hooks in there for you. You'll thank yourself later. Um, so here are, the, here are the close up shots of what this looks like when it's finished. Um, I did end up settling uh, to have the legs be about eight and a half inches long on this. Uh, this way, you know, it's up off the ground and you don't have to worry about chainsawing through uh, and hitting the ground. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, you know, please like and subscribe and uh, stay around for more home tips. Thank you.